Okay, this is the most important stuff here. Motion with constant acceleration. This is the special case that we look at. The kinematic equations that we see here only work if the acceleration is constant. They'll work for things like uh, free fall, they'll work for things like where there's a constant force. They don't work for other things, so it's important to note we can't use them unless we are completely sure our acceleration is constant. These are the four equations. Um, the first one says that the final velocity equals the initial velocity plus acceleration times time. That's fairly straightforward, and we'll see where that comes from. The next one says our position change, our displacement, is equal to the average velocity times time, or one half the initial velocity plus the final velocity times time. Third equation, displacement is equal to V0 times T, the initial velocity times time, plus one half the acceleration times time squared. The last one, which is probably the most difficult to understand where it came from, is the final velocity squared equals the initial velocity squared plus twice the acceleration times the change in position. Now oftentimes we get rid of the deltas. It's just an easier way to write this out. But X still means our displacement. So just because you don't see that there doesn't mean it's not displacement. Um, also, sometimes you'll see this written as VI and VF, but for our purposes we're going to use V0 from now on, and for final velocity we'll just forget the subscript. Again, if you want to see where these equations came from, uh, such as this equation right here, the first one, you can imagine a graph we won't go into this in a lot of detail, but if the acceleration is constant, V versus T is a straight line. That makes this really easy. If slope is A and A is a straight line, then we know that the final position will just be the initial position plus the slope times how far you go in the horizontal direction. That one's easy, of course. Um, so again, looking at the graphical interpretation, um, there's nothing hard about uh, with that equation right there. Um, if we want to derive this through calculus, we know that the acceleration is a change in velocity as a function of time. We can uh, integrate both sides. We come up with this expression here. The acceleration uh, times time plus some constant is equal to the velocity. That constant just happens to be the initial velocity if you uh, substitute in there. So you can get that from calculus too. Um, the second equation uh, just comes from the definition of displacement, average velocity, and time. If you're moving at a constant rate, the average is just one half the initial plus the final. This one right here can also come from our calculus. If you know that um, uh, <clears throat> we use a, a first equation right here and we plug this into this equation uh, that we just derived over there uh, basically substituting for V final right here puts our initial velocity right there we get uh, 1 half 2 V0 plus AT the second V0 comes from this one right here the AT comes from right here and we get our third equation from that. Last equation is a little bit difficult to get to, but um, very important. It's the only equation that doesn't have time in it. Um, we can um, come to this equation by again taking this equation right here and substituting into the third equation that we got right there. We're going to substitute out for time and basically we get this expression right here. And again, you can um, use calculus to, to get you know, any of the different results uh, that we saw with the four equations. That's not the important point. What we need to do is choose what equation to use in different situations. Now, take a look at this problem right here. We're given a number of pieces of information. 
It says here, consider a car with an initial speed of 10 meters per second and an acceleration of 3 meters per second squared. If the acceleration is constant, what is the speed after 2 seconds? Read through the problem, identify what you're given. This is really the essence of putting these equations together, or putting these problems together. We're given initial speed, v0. We're given the acceleration, 3 meters per second squared. We're even given time, 2.5 seconds. It then asks, what is the given speed? What is the, the speed? What is the final speed? So they're asking for v here. We need to identify an equation that has all of these three givens plus what we're trying to find. Okay? Of the four equations, this is the equation that works. In fact, this equation doesn't even have to be manipulated. I plug in v0, I plug in the acceleration, I plug in time. So very important. Identify what you're given, identify what you're trying to find, find an equation with all those variables in it. So I plug in, and initially I'm going 10 meters per second. My acceleration, 3 meters per second squared. Time, 2.5 seconds. 10 plus 7.5 gives me 17.5 meters per second. So that's a real easy, straightforward application of this. This only works because the acceleration is constant. If the acceleration were not constant, we can't use these kinematic equations. Do another example using the same equation. Consider a person finishing a race, running with an initial speed of 10 meters per second. So this is after the race. They sprinted down the track, they're at 10 meters per second, they're now slowing down. Um, the final velocity is going to be 2 meters per second. So they start at 10, end up at 2. If the acceleration is constant and takes place in 3 seconds, what is the acceleration? Now again, we're solving for an unknown. We know this, we know this, we're trying to find this, we're given that. Okay? Plug in the numbers, here's our original equation right here, but we're solving for A. So A is going to look like this. We solve for the acceleration, 2 meters per second minus 10 meters per second, so that's going to be negative. We divide that by 3 seconds, and we get an acceleration of negative 2.67 meters per second squared. So they started the race, they sped up, now we're finishing the race, they're slowing down. Acceleration is negative because the velocity is decreasing. Another example. First, we didn't know the final velocity. Then we didn't know the acceleration. Now we're going to try to find time. Consider a jet gaining speed and altitude after takeoff. Its initial velocity is 100 meters per second. It's lifting off the ground at 100 meters per second. Its final velocity is 240 meters per second. Assume constant acceleration. Acceleration constant at one quarter of a meter per second squared. I know this, I know this, I know this. Solve for t. So here's our original equation. We solve for t. Okay, how do we do that? We subtract v0 from both sides. We then divide by acceleration. Plug in the numbers. This will take 560 seconds or 9 minutes and two, 20 seconds to reach cruising altitude. All right. The first three examples, we're using the first equation. Most of the time, you'll have to decide which of the four kinematic equations we use. Okay? Now we're going to skip the second equation because we don't use that very much and go right to the third equation. Here we have a missile launched from a jet. Initially, the speed is 200 meters per second. Okay? So my equation has to have a V0 in it. Most of them do. The missile is a constant acceleration of 160 meters per second squared. Okay? So we also have to have A. How far will it travel in two seconds? Okay. What are we doing here? We know the initial velocity. We know the time, two seconds. We know the acceleration. We can solve for uh, distance of travel, displacement. 200 to 160, we're solving for x. And again, we start with the simplest example because here we don't even have to manipulate the equation. We're trying to find x. It's already set up for that. Plug in the numbers, and again, here you see the example, 720 meters 
It will travel almost three quarters of a kilometer during its flight in only two seconds. Here's a good example of a practical explanation. Um, the Mars ex Exploration Rovers, unfortunately, Spirit and Opportunity are no longer working. Um, we have Curiosity, which is on Mars, and we have um, our next Mars 2020 rover on its way. But these um, first rovers actually uh, worked by using a um, parachute and retro rockets would then drop the rovers which were in an airbag and the airbag would drop to the surface. Now they use a combination again of parachutes, retro rockets, and airbags. Um, the rovers are dropped when they're 10 meters above the surface. That's about you know 32 feet above the surface that they're dropped. And they detach from the rocket parachute stage um, and are only protected by the airbags. If the rovers fall 10 meters, it takes them three seconds to reach the surface of Mars. How fast were they falling the moment that they detached if Mars gravity has an acceleration of 3.3 meters per second squared? Again, write what you have. Displacement is going to fall 10 meters. Okay? Time of fall, three seconds. You might even say negative 10 meters just because it's in the negative or downward direction, but 10 meters will work here. Acceleration, 3.3 meters per second squared. We don't know the final velocity, okay? And we want to find the initial velocity. We choose that third equation and solve for v0. So again, solve for v0. We're going to subtract 1 half at squared from both sides. Divide both sides by t. Again, you can see these different steps here. We then plug in our answers. We're left with the initial velocity is 1 half at minus the displacement divided by the time. And we get that it hits, it detaches from the parachute at 1.7 meters per second. We can actually plug this back in to the first equation and find out how fast it hits the surface. Okay? Um, it's initially traveling at 1.7 meters per second, roughly uh, about 4 miles per hour. The whole thing is dis descending when it's detached. If we then plug it into V equals V0 plus AT, 1.7 will be my V0. I'll add 3.3 times a time of 3, that's an extra 10 meters per second. It's hitting the ground at 11 0.7 meters per second, or about 25 miles per hour. So, um, when they use these airbags, they needed that cushioning because basically it was like hitting a telephone pole at about, um, as I said, about uh, 20 some miles per hour. Um, the larger rover, Curiosity, couldn't be delivered this way. They actually had to instead of drop it with an airbag, use something called a, 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 a crane system that would actually lower it with a winch system because it was just so heavy it would have been, been damaged by this. Another example of this, here we're going to talk about um, the tail hooks to use to uh, secure planes as they land on an aircraft carrier. Um, they slow down the jet during landing. If the landing aircraft is captured, by the cable, it has an initial speed of 50 meters per second, travels 83.3 meters during its capture, and uh, it takes 3.3 seconds to come to rest. What was the acceleration that the pilot feels? Again, initial velocity of 50 meters per second, that goes right here. Time of 3.3 seconds, goes right here. Distance x, 83.3, goes here. We solve for the acceleration. Again, we've got to manipulate this here, solve for the acceleration. We get the experience a negative 14.9 meters per second squared, or roughly about one and a half g's of backward force. So quite a shock uh, being slowed down by this cable. Uh, it's not an insignificant amount of force. It's actually one and a half times your weight that you feel in force on this landing. Sometimes we are um, left with a situation that can be uh, tough, 
we want to calculate time. Um, out of this equation, given the, the other variables, you've got to use a quadratic formula to do that uh, sometimes. But uh, for the most part, the examples that you get using this equation won't require that. It's actually easier to use another equation first um, to find one of the other missing variables and then solve for t, usually using the first equation. But you can use a quadratic formula. The fourth equation, v squared equals v0 plus uh, 2ax. Here we have a Formula 1 car. It has an acceleration of 9 meters per second squared. It's traveling at a speed of 30 meters per second initially. How fast can it be traveling if it has a distance of 200 meters to accelerate? Okay? Here's our distance. Here's our velocity initially. Again, we're assuming constant acceleration. 9 meters per second squared. We plug it into this equation right here. We're solving for final velocity. Okay. We have v squared on the left-hand side, so we've got to take the square root of both sides. After the acceleration, it's going about 67 meters per second, or it can accelerate to about 150 miles per hour from the initial 66 uh, six miles per hour. This shows extreme accelerations that are used in ballistics. A bullet is fired from a rifle barrel. It's going to start at zero. Initially, it's at zero. After it leaves the end of the barrel, it's traveling 950 meters per second, roughly twice the speed of sound. What kind of acceleration does this thing experience? Okay. Um, here's the distance, displacement of a half meter. Initially, it's traveling at zero meters per second. It'll have a final velocity of 950. So we use this equation right here. We're solving for A. Subtract V0 squared from both sides. Divide both sides by uh, one half the displacement. I should say, divide both sides by two uh, times the displacement. And when we calculate the acceleration, it's um, 903 times, uh, 903,000 meters per second squared. Okay, that is, um, got to be careful here, this is a little bit high for that. It's actually 0 0.09 million times acceleration of gravity, or about 90,000 Gs of acceleration. You know, a person can't survive more than 100 Gs, that bullet is experiencing about 1,000 times what a human being can, can uh, experience without getting killed. Here's another one, car accident. Initially, the velocity is 25 meters per second. Uh, the car slows down with an acceleration of, of negative 8 meters per second squared. How far will the car travel before the collision? Here's our acceleration. That's our brakes. Our brakes can slow us down by about 8 meters per second squared. We're traveling at 25 meters per second. Finally, we come to rest um, at 0 meters per second. Okay. How far do we travel? Well, we can only travel 156 meters before we go, uh, we, we stop, okay? So again, read the problem, draw a diagram, that's really helpful. But the most important thing is to identify the quantities that you know, okay? Once you know what quantities you have, you can choose out of the four equations, usually you only choose out of three equations, which equations mo uh, match the quantities that you know and the quantities that you're looking for. Oops. Solve for your unknowns, and again, check your results. Um, this is the most important part of this chapter right here, these kinematic equations, because we're going to do something similar next chapter, but we're also going to include uh, the y direction here.